Good afternoon and welcome to SportWorks Talks. My name is Christian Page. Great to have you with us and great to have our guest with us today, Chantel Busher. Hi, Chantel. I'm going to wave to the camera and I'm going to wave across the desk <laughs> as well. So we've got a slightly different configuration today in the interest of uh, social distancing and, and, and but also still wanting to sort of connect. Uh, we've invited Chantel into the studio, but we've maintained the distance. So we're sitting opposite each other. I'll, we'll send you a picture just so you get a sense of what it is, but that's why we can wave to each other. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Christian. A pleasure to be here. Really cool. So uh, as with SportWorks Talks, we we're going to have about a 20 minute presentation. And then afterwards, we're going to have the Q&A. If you have any questions, please pop them in the chat and then we'll do our best to answer them uh, at the end of the, of the presentation. Um, and uh, for now, please enjoy SportWorks Talks. Over to you, Shanta. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I'm working on the IOC's athlete program, specifically Athlete 365, and really look forward to the chance to speak with you all and present to you Athlete 365. But more than that, also a call to action for those of you working in sports administration to use our community, um, promote it to your athletes that you're working with, and take advantage of the great content that we've created. Um, so with that, I'd like to start the presentation, please. Just a um, a quick video we'll begin with hearing from an Olympian herself in both winter and summer Olympics, Lauren Williams from Team USA. Hi, I'm Lauren Williams, track and field, bobsled, Team USA. I was a track and field athlete for three Olympic Games, and then I took a pivot and I went into bobsled. Uh, and then there's also, of course, life after sports. So I think you could say I probably had, you know, three lives. You know, life as a track and field athlete, life as a bobsledder, and then life as an athlete after sports. My next big challenge. Well, I'm really enjoying life after sport now that I've figured out what I'm passionate about. And so I'm doing financial planning that serves athletes and also other young professionals. And I figured, you know, I am a young professional. I am an athlete. So what, what gaps can I fill? And finding something that fills the gap and allows me to continue to participate in sport in a way that I feel is meaningful um, has been really awesome. Transitioning from sport to life after sport is one of the toughest things that an athlete has to conquer. There are so many different emotions when you go from being cheered for on a regular basis to waking up and have to cheer yourself on. But you can do it. The transition does become wonderful as long as you can figure out who you really are and what you're meant to do. The athlete is the thing that you are right now. It's not the only thing that you are. I think that video was a really good illustration of the um, reason behind Athlete365 and why I created this community for athletes. Um, it showed Lauren's experience and what she was saying in that video shows the gap that athletes often find themselves in while they're a competitive athlete and then to their life after sport. And it's that gap that Athlete365 is trying to fill in supporting the holistic athlete at all stages in their career. And there's many elements to what we do with Athlete365, and we've got bold ambitions to make athletes' lives better, but we can't do that alone, and we look forward to engaging with stakeholders throughout the Olympic movement in this mission. If we look at the brand foundation of Athlete365 with that purpose to make athletes', athletes lives better, it's equally important to understand how we're trying to achieve this. We want to provide a place for athletes to learn, have their voice heard, and feel connected to this dynamic, wider athlete community that they are a part of. We want to do that by providing relevant advice, careers, uh, tools, um, services, and we feel that Athlete365 is uniquely positioned to do so in supporting athletes at all stages in their career and when they need it most. So this platforming community helps athletes but it's also our sincere hope that this is helping other organizations within the Olympic movement to support and understand the unique needs that their athletes have as well. In originally creating this community, we found it was, we knew it was extremely important to understand the extremely diverse global uh, athlete community that we are serving. 
So to do that, we created nine athlete personas reflecting athletes from all corners of the world in team versus individual sport, different genders, um, different ages. And in creating these different personas, uh, we can try to capture the unique needs, pain points, challenges, opportunities that this different, this very diverse athlete community has. This then allows us to ensure that the services and tools and resources that we have as part of Athlete 365 are meeting the needs of this community as well as possible. Knowing that there's a lot out there in terms of information, content, and resources that we want to provide through Athlete 365, we focus on six core themes. One being voice and ensuring that our athlete community is aware of their global network of athlete representatives that are there to represent them within the Olympic movement, support their needs, understand the situations that they find themselves in, but also as a way for the IOC to support these athletes commissions through various tools, resources, webinars, etc. The second area of focus being performance. That sounds rather straightforward, but it's obviously within um, the mandate of the IOC to support athletes as much as possible to achieve the pinnacle of their sporting success through high performance. The third area of focus being well-being. Well-being can cover everything from how to best use social media to ensuring good sleep habits, and more recently, a greater focus on the area of mental health. The fourth core area is finance, covering areas such as personal branding for athletes, sponsorship, and also ensuring that our community is aware of the various opportunities provided by Olympic Solidarity. Final, uh, fifth area is career and support for athletes in their dual career and or career transition. And last but not least, integrity and ensuring that all athletes have the right to clean and fair competition. Um, we understand that we always need to ensure that our content is, um, is growing and evolving with the athlete needs. And we have a really unique offering for athletes, one that has an unrivaled athlete profile um, that allows them to uniquely position themselves and promote themselves through the attributes that they've gained through their sports career. We're able to offer hyper-personalized content and also a unique athlete identifier, meaning that we're able to verify the Olympic athletes are who they say they are and then can offer exclusive opportunities for them as Olympians. Um, to in ensure that the content being provided is always refreshed, we were able to do a survey in May. We had over 4,000 participants come in from over 135 countries, and it was a really good opportunity for us being just a few months, few months into the COVID pandemic, um, understand what their new challenges are and how Athlete365 can try to remedy that. Uh, like the global population, we found that some of the biggest findings from the survey were challenges in how to train effectively, challenges with mental health, how to stay motivated. And this, I think, in many ways reaffirmed what we as a global population were experiencing, but then also pointed out to us that we needed to have content and resources to support the athlete population during this unique and challenging time that we're now finding ourselves in. Uh, just another quick video to show um, a bit some of these uh, focal areas in a greater detail. Every athlete's performance is driven by both physical and mental well-being. The difference between winning and losing can be defined by what you eat, how you rest, how you recover, and how you think. We live extremes, amazing victories, the worst falls. What helps is just remembering how you managed it last time so the next time you will face it and focus on the next game. The right kind of nutrition can bring more than physical benefits. A nutritional plan, it's given me a sense of control. 
of things, of feeling good about what I'm putting in my body. All these changes are going to help my performance, but also help me as a person. And when it comes to recovery, mental well-being can play a crucial role in the journey. When you're an Olympic champion, it comes with its fair share of challenges. Winning is also draining. It takes a lot out of you. So it takes time to find that energy again to get back to it. If your body's broken, if it's capable of repairing itself, it will. But mentally, you really need to be having the, the right processes in place to be able to get back. Athlete 365 gives you expert advice and support in taking care of your physical and mental well-being so you can be in top shape for the big day. So I hope that that video showed some of the um, areas, again, that we're focusing on on Athlete 365. Um, and they are broad but specific at the same time, trying to identify the different um, topics that are of greatest concern and need for the athletes. Again, but to, these topics also allow us to customize at any time and see what is um what specific needs are coming up, such as those that I identified before that we've seen throughout the athlete community as a result of uh, these unique challenges during COVID that the athletes, but also the global population are going through. Um, just wanted to now present a few of these areas and some of the programs and initiatives that we've got available through Athlete 365. Uh, the first being Athlete 365 Career Plus, which as the name explains is our program supporting athletes in dual career, career transition, and finding meaningful employment after they retire from sport, but also for those athletes that are trying to balance a professional career while still training as an elite athlete. Um, career Plus is, uh, focuses not only on that employability aspect, but as a starting point, helping athletes to understand who they are outside of being an athlete. What are they interested in? What are they motivated by? What are they passionate about? Um, and another key area of focus is transferable skills, helping athletes to understand that even if they don't um, think that it's a value, what a lot of the key attributes that they've gained through their years as an elite athlete can be completely transferable to the employment arena. And now more than ever are those key attributes that employers are looking for that aren't the things you can just learn from a textbook or learn from a course. Um, so that's I think one area in particular that we really try to help athletes is understanding what an asset their athletic career is in the employment area, especially if they some feel like they are coming into employment at a slight disadvantage than some of their non-athlete peers. Um, one interesting initiative in Career Plus um, that we've had to pivot in the past few months due to the pandemic is in our outreach workshops, um, where traditionally these were delivered by Olympians to in-person groups of athletes, focusing on self-awareness, self-knowledge, and then some more practical skills in the employment area. Um, but we've had to pivot that to online delivery, and we now have the Power Up online workshops that we're delivering on Athlete 365. We've already done six uh, so far in English, French, and Spanish uh, total, and we've got a few more coming up. So please keep an eye out for that and share that amongst the athletes you're working with. But that's been a good example of something that has been a bit of a positive result of these challenges over the last few months. Um, the next initiative I wanted to share is Athlete 365 Business Accelerator. Um, to what I just spoke about, one of the transferable skills we see amongst the athlete community is their entrepreneurship experience. A lot of athletes have been natural entrepreneurs through the course of their athletic career, having to collect sponsors, manage the logistics of competitions, um, just the logistics of an elite athlete career make many athletes naturally born entrepreneurs. And we've got this fantastic program that is based on a blended learning concept of providing some foundational knowledge through an online course in what entrepreneurship is and some of those key principles of it and then uh, moves on to online workshops and for Olympians to have an opportunity to work with a mentor. This program is funded by Olympic Solidarity. We had great results in the first year of it, and we look forward to relaunching in early 2021. 
um, having to pivot again the delivery channels of it slightly uh, with the current travel restrictions that we've got in place. But um, a really fantastic program that we've seen great results so far. Um, also wanted to share, if we, if we look at the core topic of this talk of how athletes are at the heart of the Olympic movement, the Athletes Declaration is a fantastic example of that. This was written for athletes, by athletes, uh, through a series of surveys and also uh, consultation feedback sessions. Um, it's led by a 19 athlete, uh, 19 member athlete steering committee, and we had over 4,000 athletes uh, who were participating in the surveys and consultations, really aiming to, it's an outline of this common set of uh, aspirational rights and responsibilities. It's being adopted or referenced to by a number of, a large number of uh, NOCs, IFs, and athletes commissions. Um, but I think it's just a, a really clear example of bringing athletes into the decision-making process so that what the IOC is coming out with and producing is a reflection of their um, wishes, hopes, um, their, their voice, and their concerns. In looking at some of the ways we pivoted or adjusted uh, what we're providing as part of Athlete 365, this webinar series was a direct result of what we got out of the survey that we came out with in May. Um, understanding, I think, at the beginning of COVID, we naturally, as a global population, felt the need to connect with each other through this new digital interface that we're experiencing right now. Um, these webinars were a way for Athlete365 to present content to athletes in a more dynamic way um, and also touch on some of these topics that we were hearing from our community were of um, more relevance and greater importance now. So we've had a series of six so far, some being led, um, some being having our guests be inspirational athletes such as Elliot Kipchoge, Axel, Lunds Axel Lundsvindal, and I think those are really interesting and also Yusra Mardini to hear from athletes that we're all in this shared situation. How are they coping with the challenges that this pandemic is facing? How are they staying on track with training and the advice that they have for their fellow athletes? We also had a great one with uh, the World Olympians Association on how athletes can use their Olympic legacy for greater good. And then we've had a few that are more expert driven. Uh, we had Dr. Claudia Reardon from the IOC's Working Group of Mental Health speak about the mental health challenges that athletes specifically are focusing or are experiencing, but also even more so during this time of COVID. And we had a fantastic webinar uh, led by Intel Rick Echeverria and Olympian Ashton Eaton on Intel's commitment to the Olympic movement. Um, and also they launched with some exciting initiatives that they were providing and from Ashton Eaton as an Olympian, how he used his sporting career to help um, translate that into employment at Intel and, and networking and how he was able to make that successful transition. So these webinars have been a really exciting new offer for Athlete365, a way for, like this webinar, for the athlete community to directly interact with the guests of the webinar and beyond that, it's provided us with a really good source of content that we can then link with resources down the line on these various topics. Uh, we'll look to relaunch this again in 2021, so please stay tuned to this area. Um, and with everything I'm saying, please share with the athletes that you're working with so we can make these resources go farther and wider. It's always important, I think, to look at how we're doing with all this. Um, we've certainly increased our social promotion by theme. Um, we've got about four athlete-focused articles per week across nine languages and are really trying to um, adjust this as we've got different communication campaigns or focal areas going and also as we hear from the athlete community about what their specific needs are as the calendar goes on. And looking at the numbers, um, I think they, they largely speak for themselves. We've been really pleased with the traction we get, um, not just of athlete participation, but equally from members of the entourage and recognizing the value that members of the entourage are seeing on our community. We're looking to develop more resources specifically for them on Athlete 365 so that 
they are in a position to best support their athletes and can also benefit from the resources that we have available there. But overall, the number of registrations have been going up, but also the number of time that users are spending on the platform. We've already helped more than 50,000 athletes in over 200 countries, um, but we're never settling. We always want to do more, help more athletes, and more than anything, we don't see that this is something the IOC can do alone, and we call on the National Olympic Committees, International Federations, Athletes Commissions to spread the word of Athlete365, use the resources that are available uh, for your athletes, and please always feel more than welcome to contact us so we can present these resources to you in greater detail, but then also how you can use Athlete365 to gain insights into your specific athlete population and see what their specific pain points may be or challenges so that you as an organization are better um, suited and better prepared to, to support them in that area. Um, Then just the final point is, is going into more detail in this call to action that um, I think is one of the main things I wanted to get across is we're, we want to keep the athlete at the center of everything we're doing. Um, and I'm sure everyone in the sports organizations share that ambition. And through working together, we can greater help the global athlete population and community, but also work with uh, the other stakeholder groups. So the, you can engage with Athlete365, share it with the athletes you're working with, and use that as a way to learn more about them so in turn you're better able to support them. That's it for me so far. Thank you. Wonderful. A wonderful presentation. Thanks so much, Chantel. Um, great information um, and some really great insights and some great questions coming through on the chat here from, from all of our uh, participants. So thanks for them for sending them in. Um, I think you hit on some couple of key points there about sharing this information. And I think the opportunities we have and always looking at the positives out of, out of out of our current crisis with the pandemic, I think the opportunities to host webinars and create greater awareness um, is certainly one of those opportunities that we're, we're looking to exploit to get this information out there. Um, so really grateful that you've been able to come and share this with us today. So I'm going to launch into the first question. Um, I'm going to put you back on there. I'm going to put myself in the, in the little picture. There I am. Oh, that's you on you. Sorry. So, first question uh, from Hanata. Thanks, Renata. Th thanks for sending your questions in. Uh, hi, Chantel. Uh, is the IOC looking after Olympians post-Olympic life mostly, or is there an effort to also help NOCs to aid all levels of athletes? Uh, it's a great, a great question, Renata, and um, comforting to get a question from a, from a friend as well as um, knowing your interest in this area. No, the, the, we're certainly looking after athletes at all stages of their career. Um, and this goes to younger athletes that are more looking to compete at a youth Olympic games, those that are elite athletes um, at international level competitions, those at the games, and also those that have finished their sports career. Um, what's interesting to see is how you have to adjust the resources depending what age and at where in their career they are. Um, and I touched on that a little bit in the nine personas that we've developed. Um, but a um, elite athlete at the start to middle of their career who might be in their 20s is going to have very different needs than an athlete in their late 30s who's beginning to retire. Um, so we have to, we've done a lot of mapping of the athlete's career and overlapping that with um, other kind of transition points that they may have to try to have a full understanding of the specific needs that they will have. And one of uh, a fantastic characteristic of Athlete 365 is we have this opportunity to do to deliver hyper personalized content. So when an athlete creates their profile and says they competed in whichever edition of the games, we can see their country, we can then try to understand what content's going to be the most relevant to them based on where they are in their sporting career. Great. So it's quite uh, the opportunity to structure it, like you say, for the athletes is incredibly unique, actually, because yeah. I think you've got quite a heavy program, uh, but the opportunity to really tailor it makes it uh, pretty uh, powerful. And I think also with that, it's uh, there's a lot of content and you don't want anything to get lost. And as we all know, 
with having our devices on all the time, you often have a very short opportunity of time to capture someone's attention. So it makes uh, the job even more important to provide content that's going to be relevant to every user coming on as quickly as possible so that they find it relevant and will stay on the platform and come back as well. Yeah, great, great points. So I'm going to switch to the next question. Thanks, Isadora, uh, for yours. Uh, have you got a couple of parts here? Uh, first of all, hi, Chantel. Thanks for all your insights and information. Uh, the issue of career transition is so crucial to athlete well-being. So I have a couple of questions and how this relates to athlete identity. Um, how can we, society, uh, better understand the athlete identity as a holistic identity, not limited to athletic feats, as the Olympic movement already uh, sort of treats the athletes as role models that promote certain values? Uh, would this help athletes to transition into post-competition? That's a fantastic question, and absolutely. Um, I think those of us working in the sports space, while we are in the sports space, we have to learn to see athletes beyond their role as athletes. All of us, whether we're athletes or not, we wear different hats, whether as a, a friend, a partner, a family member, a worker, an athlete, we all have these different identities. And the earlier that athletes can understand their identity, both as an athlete, but apart from that, the better position they will be for their transition to life after sport because when that, without that understanding, the moment that that um, retirement or transition begins, it can be a lot more challenging if they don't see themselves as anything apart from being the athlete. Um, that's why if you, if you look, for example, at the Youth Olympic Games, there's always a series of activities um, and educational opportunities for athletes in these different areas of their life so that they understand they are not just an athlete. Um, and I think that's a very important message as well for the members of the entourage that are supporting the athletes in these other areas, whether it be in education or part-time work or having things in their life outside of sport to then also lessen the pressure that comes with retirement, whether that be a planned retirement or in many cases an unplanned retirement. So. I completely agree with that point that looking at the athlete as a holistic person is extremely important and will make that transition to whatever comes next much easier and smoother. That's great. That's a great, a great response. And great to have such good answers. Thank you. <laughs> um, and great questions, a good combination. So, and the second part of this, which kind of segue into part of what you're answering there is, you know, how can we encourage and empower athletes uh, to define uh, for themselves what it means to be an athlete and also acquire and apply tools to explore their personal identities and how this relates to their per athlete persona. It's, um, I think it's complicated. You kind of answered that in the first part um, very, very well. So thanks thanks for your question, Isadora. I'm going to scroll on to the next one. Uh, great question here from Brandon. Um, and you've mentioned mental health a couple of times throughout the, the, the presentation. Um, hi, Chantel. What is Athlete 365 doing in the area of mental health support for athletes? No, it's a great question, and like I mentioned, I think we've seen the need for greater mental health support um, come within the athlete community over the past months and years, and it's just as important as physical health for all of us, for athletes in particular, um, and recognizing that Athlete365 has had a mentally, hashtag mentally fit campaign with a series of content, resources, and also some really good athlete-driven stories just to first raise awareness of the topic among the athlete community and let them understand that there's no stigma around mental health. This is something that they should all, that we should all be talking about and normalizing. Um, and then in terms of specific resources, uh, a few months ago, we were able to launch um, that uh, an opportunity for Olympians to access a mindfulness app um, that's available to all Olympians, just again, to provide a bit of a, um, Reminder to look after their mental health through meditation. Um, there soon will be a helpline available for Olympians that have qualified for Tokyo and those for Beijing as well. That's a 24 seven mental health hotline where they can speak to a trained counselor in that space. Um, and then there's also new work being developed and soon to be launched for the administrators, a um, sport mental health assessment tool and the IOC mental health in elite athletes toolkit. So equal resources, both for the athletes themselves and for the administrators and members of the entourage uh, looking out for them. 
And we'll also hope to have another webinar in the next couple of months in this area of athlete mental health. Brilliant. Uh, again, as we, we, we talked about this a little bit before, prior to the, the, the presentation, and, and obviously the case of the pandemic has, has impacted everybody and, and the instances of mental health. And it's wonderful to hear that it's not just the, the, the athletes, the, the programs they can participate, but also supporting the, the entourage in how to support athletes. So it's a holistic program. Great, great work. Um, question here from Pablo. Uh, thanks for the question, Pablo. Uh, so what are the main performance indicators of Athlete 365 beyond social media engagement and visits to the website? That's a good question. Yeah, really good question, Pablo. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons why I was so excited to be a part of this talk today is um, a performance indicator that we're really trying to increase now are the number of NOCs, IFs, and other sports organizations that are interested in working with Athlete 365 so that we can have um, greater engagement directly to the athlete population so that it's not just something, um, it's a very dynamic community online, but something that we know we have um, networks around working with us that are that also see the value that are very interested in promoting that to their athlete population. Um, and then in addition to that, where we've got live events such as our Athlete 365 webinar series or our power up online workshops, obviously participation numbers as well. Um, and I think one key metric um, on the community is also how often people are coming back, not just coming to the platform once, looking at it and then never coming again, but really coming back, staying on for a long amount of time, sharing it, et cetera. Great, and it is a, it is a good, great question, Pablo, because it is important. I mean, social media is important. It does. It is a, it is a good metric, um, but the participation and engagement says it says a lot for the content that you that you're being producing as well. So it's wonderful. Uh, so a question here from Anko. Uh, hello, respected professionals. Hello. <laughs> um, great to have you with us. Um, I am not an uh, Olympian, but a sports business management professional. So my question is, what are the opportunities like for for the for the people like me? Mm. We've got um, an area of Athlete 365 um, called Athlete 365 Learning, which this learning theme really underpins all the content that we have available on the platform. Um, but this is Athlete 365 Learning is home to a fantastic collection of online courses that are open to anyone to uh, take part in. And they are covering a wide variety of topics, all with this red thread, obviously, to sports. Um, and they're relatively short to complete, so it can be a bit of a teaser to understand if it's an area you're interested in learning more about um, or not. Um, but that would certainly be something I would encourage you to visit, have a look at the courses, and take those that you think would be of interest to you. Great. So yeah, the, uh, I've been aware of this for some time, and I, it was it was it's a great question, and it's something I to identify that this is available. Um, there is some great access to to a lot of this uh, material and information. So, yeah, I completely echo that point. Uh, great question. Um, one here from uh, An Anfisa. Apologies if I'm, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but thanks for the question. Uh, thank you, Chantel. Uh, does IAC have a plan to have some special webinar courses for athletes' entourage, uh, specifically for coaches, uh, for them to understand that education in, is important for athletes? Excellent question. Um, absolutely. I've, we've got, um, well, a few different things in the works. As I mentioned, we'll have more resources on Athlete 365 in the coming months, specifically for members of the entourage, so that like the, um, like you mentioned, uh, they can we can help to help them understand the value of athletes having other pursuits outside of their sports career, whether that be education, employment, etc. Um, and on Athlete 365 Learning, there are some courses that are already more suited for coaches, those having to do with coaching and, and other things like that on uh, supporting athletes. Additionally, we have a fantastic offer for Olympians um, to have access to LinkedIn Learning. And in LinkedIn Learning's massive suite of courses, there's some there as well that are more suited for members of the entourage. Um, we'll be developing this Athlete 365 Entourage space in the coming months and try to have a one-stop shop for resources specifically for this uh, targeted population. Great. So uh, on, thanks for that question, Anfisa. 
Uh, another question here from Neil. Uh, hi, Chantel. Uh, does the uh, Athlete365 encourage athletes to spend time outside of their sport uh, to help them create multiple identities? Uh, recent research is showing that uh, this can enhance performance on the field. It's a really good point, and I think there's um, there's a fine line, though, to be said of encouraging, especially when it comes to coaches or members of the entourage, encouraging and making information available, if I can say it that way, where I don't think we would ever say a coach has to do this or this, but it's um, like the comment mentioned, showing research that is available that, that has illustrated that athletes that have a, have a pursuit outside of sport, their athletic performance will not be diminished by that, but in many cases will be improved. Um, so I think it's we're trying to find the right way to show that message without seeming like it's um, being a, a dictated to the coaches or anything like that. Um, but there are probably, you know, in the content we develop over the next few months, any case studies or athlete stories we can share, we will. And we already have a lot of really good stories like that from athletes on Athlete365 of those that have um, – that have been working or studying while training and I've done really well with it. And we did a video a few years back of a, with a Swiss bobsledder who was working as a food scientist at a chocolate factory while training in bobsled. It was the, one of the best video projects I've ever been able to be involved in because it was at a chocolate <laughs> factory. Um, but he found, he was explaining that he really thrived in that. He thrived in having something outside of training where he could completely close the door on his sportsman life for that brief amount of time and go into something where his mind and, and brain was being used in a completely different way where people at work had no idea he was training at such an elite level. So I think it's it's really important that we do communicate that, but again, in the right way where it's not being uh, mandated or dictated. I mean, and who can't live without a, bit, a little bit of chocolate? I mean, gosh, what a motivation. Did you have to do much filming in the factory? Got to do some taste testing. <laughs> Fantastic. Some of the perks of the job. <laughs> cool. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, question here from Amelia. Hi, uh, Christian and, and uh, Chantel. Hi. Uh, are there any type of partnership with universities, schools, or academies that are willing to collaborate with the development of the athletes? Yeah, that's a good question and one we get a lot in the Career Plus space. Um, no, their answer, long story short, there's not, um, and the reason for that is every country's national context when it comes to higher education is vastly different. Um, and also the uh, Olympic administration can be very different and who the athletes are in contact with, how often and in what form. Um, so it, it's been challenging and um, very complicated to try to have partnerships directly with universities, understanding that these intricacies exist, um, but to offer that there is some support and assistance available. We've uh, taken an alternative approach, such as um, we've developed checklists that of things that athletes should look for when identifying a potential academic institution that they want to attend while training. So to you know look at things like, is there a special counselor available that can help them manage their training with their um, exam calendar? Um, are there any flexibilities on deadlines? Things like that to put the empowerment more on the athlete than the academic institution. Um, additionally, we work with the National Olympic Committees a lot and some NOCs do have partnerships with academic universities. And if anything, we'll try to signpost the athletes that come to our platform to where they can go for help. But um, it's just a very complicated landscape in higher education and not something that we've found the right way to address yet. So we try to find alternative solutions to still make sure that that support's being provided. That's great. I mean, yeah, there is, follow-on education is, is a complex. Um, and it's, it's great that it, it, signposting is, is quite often, a, is busy enough, <laughs> as well as running your program. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. It keeps you pretty busy. So uh, I've got time for a couple more questions. I've got some great questions coming through on the chat. So just rest assured, if we don't get to your question today, uh, we will be putting them into a forum so that um, Chantelle will be able to answer them uh, offline. Uh, so we'll be able to follow up. So we'll send you those links uh, once we've completed the webinar. So like I said, we've just got time for a couple more questions, if that's okay with you, Chantelle. Absolutely. <laughs> great. So a uh, question here from uh, Paola. Uh, thanks for the question, Paola. Um, Athlete 365 webinars and programs uh, are open also to athletes that practice non-Olympic sports. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much for that question because I wanted to flag that before and got a little nervous, forgot. Um, about 95% of the content on Athlete 365 is completely open for anyone and all of us to, um, to take advantage of and, and look and use and share, et cetera. Um, so first call to action is register for Athlete 365. You are then able and asked to indicate if you are an athlete or not, if you are Olympian, uh, which edition of the games, which sport and country. Um, for the rest of us non-Olympians, uh, when you create your registration, you'll have access to pretty much everything on the platform, which is fantastic. All the learning courses I mentioned, the webinars are open to for anyone to participate in. Obviously, everything we're putting on Athlete 365, we are um, creating with the Olympic athlete in mind. That doesn't mean it's not going to be applicable for athletes at different levels of their career, in non-Olympic sports, uh, of different ages, from different parts of the world. It's got that um, global applicability to a certain degree that we really strive to have it um, have available. Then there is this um, some exclusive offers that are only available for uh, Olympic athletes that we verified in our database, such as exclusive job opportunities, if there's any um, academic scholarships that we've been we've made aware of. So we do have this exclusive section for Olympian, Olympians that we're always trying to further develop. But again, the majority of the content is free, open, so please check it out. So I would, I would argue that it's a wonderful little gift from the Olympic movement, um, and, and a very unknown one, actually, because I think, uh, as with the 365 program, people become great, greatly aware of the Athlete 365 program, but the available content is, uh, is, is quite remarkable. So I do recommend checking it out. Um, so sorry, time for one more last question uh, from Dr. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Cole. Um, hi, Chantel. Thank you for the presentation. And it's a good one. Now, what do you think, what do you find are the current challenges in terms of ensuring Athlete 365 fits with local context and issues, e.g. tough economic situations or geopolitical conflicts and so on? Uh, that's a, a really good question. And when I presented those nine athlete personas, that was really the objective behind that exercise is to ensure that we can, what we're providing to athletes can, um, can support as many athletes as possible given all these um, intricacies and, and differences that do exist depending where in the world they're coming from, what sport, what age, etc. I think one of the most interesting challenges we face is by trying to support the global athlete population. That means we can only go into so much uh, level of detail or specificities because athletes, depending where in the world they're coming from, these ages, um, sports, et cetera, there are so many differences that do exist. So it's, we're always trying to find that balance of providing resources, tools, and services that can support the global athlete population. Um, but as a result, that may not make it as specific as possible, if I explain that well. Yeah, I think it's a complex, it's a, it's a complex uh, challenge. Um, and uh, yeah, we talked about this earlier as well, the importance of the program. And a long time ago, it was like, well, where do we start? Um, and I think the steps that are being made, the progress that is being made, um, and the efforts being uh, delivered of seeing what's being produced um, is is wonderful steps in the right direction. Uh, you know, we talked about it at the very beginning of the program and, and said, well, you know, why are we doing this? Well, it's all about the athlete. Um, so it's so critical. Uh, such an important program. So on that note, I want to say a big thank you to you, Chantel. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Thank you. Wonderful to have your presentation. Uh, wonderful to have you with us. Um, and what I say, uh, looking forward to having you here again soon sometime. Thank you so much, Christian. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for everyone for tuning in for the questions. And uh, thanks in advance for checking out Athlete 365 and sharing it amongst the athletes that you're working with. Great. Thank you so much, Chantal. And thank you again for all of you for participating. Brilliant questions. Wonderful to have you all with us. And I want to wish you all a safe afternoon wherever you are in the world. Great to have you with us. And thank you. And bye for now.